going to be talking about my um, newly released Easter and Spring um, canvas set that is made to display and switch out on our um, beautiful welcome home seasonal display here. Isn't it beautiful? I'm so excited to actually show these to you up live and, and up close and personal today. <laughs> I want to talk to you about them. I want to talk about what's in the kit. And then um, we're going to get crafty. We're going to make them today. I want to show you some of the techniques that I used. So good morning, everyone. How are you? Hello, hello. Hi, Janet. Hi, Teresa and Gail. Uh, let's see who else is out there. Patty. Good morning, Patty. Hi, Diane. Hello, Cindy. Hi, Jenny. Um, good to see you guys watching. You guys, I really, really love this set. I think this set is so cute. And I know it may seem a little bit early, but y'all, it's time to get ahead of it. It's time to get ahead of that net, that upcoming season, which is spring. Let's go ahead, start creating. It's always good to start creating a little bit uh, in advance. So that way, um, as we welcome spring in, we already have some beautiful handmade items that we can put out on display in our homes. Um, I love the onset of spring because what comes back? Well, colors start to emerge back. Flowers start to bloom. Trees start to bud all of the things. And it's just, it's refreshing, right? To me, spring is such just, just kind of a refreshing, uh, rejuvenating time. And so I really, really wanted my um, canvas set for uh, Easter and spring um, to really reflect that. Okay. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Well, I want to kind of talk to you just really quickly in case we have some brand new people watching that don't know about this um, wonderful display. So I guess we started this. Gosh, I guess maybe it's been almost almost a year now. But anyway, we started this. I'm going to call it a series. I don't know what else to call it, where um, I took this beautiful wooden shiplap house. OK, and did some beautiful kind of um, fun kind of distressed shabby paint techniques on it. Um, and then we create these um, really cute or I create these really cute pairs of canvases that then we release for different seasons, different holidays, all of the things. OK, so if you're just starting out, I'm going to go ahead and take this off for a second because I really want to point this out to you. Um, the house itself actually comes with this beautiful hardware. Um, it's kind of, it's a reproduction hardware, but oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It's nice. It's heavy. It's just, it's just gorgeous. And it really gives our, um, sees, or I call this welcome home, our welcome home seasonal display. It really gives it some, some nice charm and character. So this actually comes with it. You'll have the knob, you'll have the knob plate, you'll have the wooden a shiplap house here. And then also um, this beautiful handle, okay? So all of those items will come when um, you're purchasing the complete set. And if you're just now, sorry, I have too many things up here. <laughs> if you're just now starting this with us, you're going to want to get the display. And then once you have your display, um, there is a video. I have a video workshop link that you'll receive um, so that you know how to paint this out, all of the things. Um once you have your display, then you don't need this part anymore. So we also, oh gosh, I talk with my hands, you guys. And now for whatever reason, when I do certain gestures, like things happen. That's why those fireworks just went off. <laughs> I'm a hand talker. And so, yeah, you, know, you never know what's going to happen. Um, so if you already have this portion, we sell it two different ways. You can have it with the house kit if you're just starting. Uh, but if you've already started, then we also sell just the canvas sets by themselves. Okay. And of course, they just hang. They hang so pretty just right here onto the house. And you can have them on display, switch them out. You can have this, um, the welcome home uh, display anywhere you want in your home. It can stay there all year round. And then we just, you know, you get to kind of um, 
um, easily adapt it, easily switch things out again for seasons, for holidays. Okay. So if you're interested in these things that I'm talking about today, whether it's just the canvas only set or the house set, um, I have put the links in the description on this uh, Craft and Chat Live. Okay, so it's up in the description there um, if you need it. And I'll try to post them in here in a little bit. I'm kind of flying solo today. So if you need those links, that's where they will be. Okay, so let's look at the canvases a little bit closer. Let me move this. I just display mine on the easel. This is just an easel that I got at Hobby Lobby. Um, and yeah, I just have mine out on the easel and it just looks so pretty. So let me put this right back here. And let's look at the canvases. You talk with your hands too. How many of how, how, how many others out there talk with their hands? <laughs> watch what happens, y'all. Okay, so I think I can oh, watch what happens. If I do a heart, look, all those little hearts go up right? <laughs> um, if I do two fingers, I think, balloon. oh, confetti, that's confetti. Um, I think one finger maybe is balloons or one finger's balloons. I don't know. Some Something causes balloons. Oh, yeah. Fireworks. I don't know. Weird things happen if you're a hand talker and um, you do lives. <laughs> I can't help it. I don't know how to not talk with my hands. Anyway, all right, let's look at the canvases. I'm calling this set Bunnies and Blossoms, and um, I just think it's so pretty, you guys. So this is the bunny part of Bunnies and Blossoms. These are six by six canvases, and um, I'm going to talk to you about everything that's going to be in your kit. This is beautiful napkin art. This is beautiful napkin art. So um, you're going to have the two canvases in your kit. You're going to have the napkins that we use in the kit. You're going to have all of the ribbons and lace and jute that we use in the kit. Buttons, these little Easter eggs, um, all of those things will be in your kit. The only thing that's not going to be in your kit is going to be anything wet. So paint, Mod Podge. And by the way, we don't even paint this one. You don't even need paint for this set. <laughs> so Mod Podge. If there was paint, I would say paint. Um, I do some pen work on these. So um, uh, I'll be using my pit pens. I'm also using my glaze pens. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. And then adding some sparkle, right? Adding some sparkle um, by using stickles for that. Okay. So if you look at the bunny, again, so cute. You guys, this ribbon is, um, it is a wrinkled silk. Okay, it's so gorgeous. Um, and so it's it's got some beauty and some movement and some sheen and some texture to it. It's just really pretty, but also very delicate. Um, perfect, I think, for spring. Um, if you look at the bunnies here, we have two bunnies. I'm really partial to brown bunnies. I don't know what it is about them, but I think brown bunnies are so cute. And then to top it off, adding in this adorable little gray bunny. Yeah, I just, I had to have it. <laughs> I had to have it. I love all the spring blossoms around. I love that it has this pretty check background. And then, uh, of course, we're going to kind of add our own little little twist on this. We have a pretty bow at the bottom and we have a bow around one of the bunnies next. He's just just I don't know. The bunnies are just too cute. I love bunnies for spring, period. I don't think bunnies just have to be for Easter. Um, my bunny stuff stays up pretty much all spring. OK, so this is bunnies. All right. This is bunnies. This is the, the canvas for bunnies. And this is blossoms. Equally love this one. <laughs> Equally love this one, too. Look at these blossoms. Um, I love the jars. You know, you know, if y'all know me, if you've been around me long enough, you know, I just love I love kind of repurposing old things like mason jars and ball jars and all the things. And so I immediately fell in love with this napkin art, right? I immediately fell in love with it. Um, we're going to do some things to enhance the flowers. Um, you're going to see those happen today. Again, kept my beautiful lavender um, wrinkled um, silk. I think it's called wrinkled or crinkled silk. I don't know. I'm going to call it, I don't know. 
wrinkled. I'll call it wrinkled. Um, again, laces down here. We're going to bring in a different color this time. On bunnies, we have a, a really light pink and lavender. And then on blossoms, we're bringing in this kind of really soft, almost like a robin's egg, like a light teal kind of robin's egg. Pretty, pretty, pretty color. Okay, with the lavender. All right. They're so gorgeous. And again, we have the check background. Um, but this time it's a soft gray. And I know that may seem a little un unusual, but oh my gosh, look how the flowers just pop on it. Like the, the flowers just really, the colors just look so good with this, this soft gray check background. I think it's gorgeous. Okay. So blossoms and bunnies. That is our Easter spring canvas set for my welcome home um, seasonal display. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, does anybody have any questions first? If you have any questions at all, let me know. Okay, I see some other bunny lovers out there. That's good. I think bunnies are so sweet. I think I'm partial to bunnies, y'all, because um, my parents, even though we, we grew up um, here what in the suburbs, right? In the suburbs of Fort Worth, that's where I actually grew up. My parents didn't move till much later out. Y'all know, most most of you know that my dad has some property outside of Waco that we call the farm. <laughs> but when I was younger, um, they let us have any animals we wanted. And we had bunnies as pets. We had probably, I think we had three bunnies as pets. Um, when I was young, we even had ducks. We had a couple pairs of ducks. And that was living in the suburbs. And so everybody thought that was so cool. Like all the neighbor kids, they always wanted to come over and, you know, feed the bunnies or hold the ducks or all the things. So I'm kind of partial to bunnies. And I just think these bunnies are, are just too sweet. Okay. Um, the measurements of the Welcome Home House. Okay. We are actually shipping these now. We just released them yesterday, Lisa, uh, or Lisa. Am I saying your name right? Uh, we just released these yesterday, so they are beginning to ship. Okay. Um, we started shipping some today. Um, I know we'll be shipping more next week. Okay. All right. The other question was about the house. Good question. I believe we have the measurements of the house. I believe the measurements of the house are on the website, but it is roughly 11, I'm, I'm going to say about 11 inches wide by 14 and a half inches tall. Um, it's a good size piece. Like it's not, it's not too big, but it's not too small. Like it's, it's a really beautiful size piece. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm going to put these kind of over here to the side. I'll be grabbing them kind of as we talk. Um, but I'd like to show you what all is in the kit. Okay. Um, these napkins are not in the Napkin Club, Club bundle. These napkins are just for this um, particular kit. It got way too hard for us to manage the numbers we needed for um, napkin club. We have to order these, you know, so far in advance. And then on top of that, factoring in more numbers for kids is just easier for us to keep it separate. <laughs> All right, let's look at these beautiful napkins. Here is the bunny napkin. Now you're going to get the full, the full napkin. So you're going to have some extra bunnies that you can create with. It's also good to have an extra square just in case you have an oopsie. Napkin art is very forgiving, you guys. It's very forgiving. So it's always good to kind of have that extra piece just in case we got to go in and do a little, you know, patch up a little spot or something like that. Sorry, y'all. This piece of my hair is getting, getting wild. Let me tuck it behind my ear. <laughs> All right. So again, you're going to have the complete full napkin in your kit. And here is the Blossoms napkin. Again, the same thing, same flowers. They look identical. So, um, yeah, if you don't need these for your, um, you know, to, as as an, an extra or if you just make sure you save a backup, just save a backup. You can use the others for whatever you want, but it's always good to kind of keep that backup square in case you have any issues as you're creating. OK, <laughs> all right. 
Oh, no, Jane. Um, Jane says, after the past first minute freezes, no matter what you try. Um, okay, and I'm assuming that you did try to get out and come back in. Maybe try a different device. Try that, Jane. And Jill said, Jill's having, oh, it's snowing. Okay, that might be it too. All right, well, the replay will be available if you're having any kind of issues connecting. The replay will be right here. Okay. All right. And you're also going to get this, the link to this um, replay um, after you purchase your kit. Well, actually we have to, we have to set it up. We have to set it up, but everybody that purchases a kit will get the link to this replay. So that way you can watch it um, when you're creating your, your uh, canvases. Okay. All right. So um, as I mentioned before, you're going to have two canvases in the kit. They're both six by six canvases. You have your napkins and then you're going to have a couple of bags of goodies here. OK, now the first bag I wanted you to look at is this bag with lace and all the things we specifically I had specifically talked to my prep girls um, about making sure that we kept these items in their own bag. There are some ribbons in this bag, too, but this, you guys, if you see lace, that is your bow bag. The, this is, these are the items you're going to need to make the bows for your canvases. So just put that to the side, okay? Everything you need to make both of the bows for your projects are going to be in here, okay? So if it has lace in it, that's your bow bag, okay? Bows bag, you're going to have, have two. If it have, has eggs in it, <laughs> if it has eggs in it, this is going to be the items that you're going to need for the canvas itself. The, the lavender um, is going to go around the edges and the hanger. So this is for the sides of the canvases and the hanger. This little pink piece is going to be for the little bow around the brown bunny's neck. You've got some buttons in here. You've got some jute in here. We have our Easter eggs. Now the Easter eggs, I believe there are five colors, but you only are getting four eggs. So it'll be a variety. Um, so I think the other color in here is a green. So you'll have four eggs, different colors. They all look beautiful. Okay. With the canvas. All right. Yes. Keeping it separated because I know how I am. I mean, I would be like, oh, well, this must be for this and I'll start cutting and I'll start doing, and then I'll realize, oh no, I cut the, I should have, that was for something else. <laughs> so just remember the lace is this is for the bows. This will be at the very end. So just put this to the side. Okay. And then this is kind of um, the other things that you'll be needing. The other, um, other things, let's talk about that really quick too. The things that aren't in your kit, we're going to be using Mod Podge mat. And um, you'll notice I, I did make sure that my, I loosened my lid before the live. If you were with me on last week's crafted chat, I could not get the lid open. I was banging it doing all the things. Well, I, I, I did all that pre-live this time. So you'll need Mod Podge mat for this. You will, um, I already mentioned this, but if you if you like to do pen work, I like to use pit pens for pen work on my napkin art. Um, also, if you want to add any sparkle, um, my three fa fa favorite clear stickles are crystal, diamond, and unicorn. And I'm actually going to be, um, let's see. I think I'm trying to remember what color I use. Oh, they're over here. Okay. I think I've used crystal, but it really doesn't matter. Any of these, sorry, any of these are going to look beautiful. Okay. Any of them are going to look great. Um, hot glue, hot glue is going to be helpful for you to have on hand uh, as well. Okay. Well, thank you, Janet. I'm glad that they, they never disappoint. I'm glad that you love them. <laughs> Thank you guys for sprinkling this video out. I do appreciate you um, um, sprinkling out today. That's always so sweet of you. And one more thing I want to tell you about your napkin, just real quick, is sometimes with napkins, well, lots of times with napkins, you're going to have some of the images, okay? Like you can see Bunny is on this side, and then Bunny is on this side. You're going to have mirrored images, okay? Now, if you just flip it, you're going to have one this way. You're going to have one this way. It really doesn't matter. You create with whichever square of your napkin you want. Again, you're getting the entire napkin. 
So um, it's going to be really easy. Uh, you'll have choices. If you just happen to want that brown bunny on the other side, then it can happen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get started crafting. You guys ready? Are you having a good Friday so far? Are you looking forward to the weekend? It's supposed to be rainy here this weekend, and I kind of like rainy weekends. You're all right. That's all right with me. I don't have any other plans. So um, I will be home probably doing some crafting and laundry and all the other weekend things. <laughs> so I just need to cut. We're going to go ahead and get started now on the crafting portion of this workshop. So of, of this crafting chat today. So I'm cut one square and I'm actually going to do these kind of um, at the same time. They're similar techniques. To me, if you're making multiples, even if it's a different napkin, if this, if the um, techniques are similar, um, I just like to kind of do the steps all at the same time. I think this one, yeah, I think this one is uh, is not mirrored, so not that it's really going to matter. There we go. So let's go ahead and get some Mod Podge going here. Oh, and Vanessa Babin. Okay, I've got to pop her name up here on, on the screen. And I hope I said your last name right. She says, it's going to be raining Sunday. Hopefully Mardi Gras parades can run. Okay, so she is so, so sweet. She actually sent our team a king cake. Um, and I haven't had a chance to reach out to you, Vanessa, and tell you thank you. So I want to tell you thank you right now. Thank you so much. She sent our, our team a king cake. And um, um, that was just so sweet and kind of you. So thank you. Thank you. And then we had another wonderful lady um, um, a little while back that sent us a box of Valentine chocolates. Her name was Carol Burdett. And you guys are just so sweet to us. So thank you. Thank you for um, for um, being so kind and generous to me and my team and um, spoiling us. <laughs> You're making us fat. <laughs> but we don't really care because we believe here, um, my team here at Miss Tracy Creates, we believe that crafting burns calories. So we say just eat what you want. <laughs> Well, thank you, Vanessa, again. It was so sweet of you. All right, I'm going to pour some Mod Podge into my little uh, tart tin here. Let me put that out of the way. And grab a paintbrush. So what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and separate the napkins. Um, I do this. I like this. Um, I caught the lick and stick method. And I just press my fingers together. And voila, this one is just a two ply napkin. So one ply comes off very easily. Now, if your lick and stick is not quite as sticky as mine, I've been told that mine is unusually sticky from people. They say theirs, theirs doesn't work that way. If yours doesn't work that way, then this is what you can do. You can just put the tiniest bit, that's too much, the tiniest bit of Mod Podge on your finger. And same thing, just kind of pounce it together till it feels kind of not gluey, but kind of sticky. And then you can put your fingers together and voila, we get that ply off. So both of these napkins are just two ply. You only have to take off one ply. All right. Okay. Now we're going to just do some good old basic um, napkinizing here. I'm going to switch my screen. Whoops, I did the wrong one. There we go. I'm going to switch my screen up a little bit just so you can see a little more of what's happening. And let's zoom in just a bit. There we go. So I'm going to apply what I call a healthy coat of Mod Podge. Really easy, just a paintbrush. A healthy coat to me is a nice even coat but it needs to look wet. You don't want to be too chintzy on your Mod Podge. Um, we're going to look at it in the light in a minute. We're going to make sure that it all looks nice and wet, that we haven't missed any spots. And we're not doing any Mod Podge on the side, okay? At least not right this moment. 
We're not going to do any Mod Podge on the sides. It's okay if a little bit gets on the sides. That's just how it goes. And now I'm going to put my napkin art on. Okay. So I like to kind of take the tissue from the top and kind of drag it down in place. All right. Perfect. We just want to make sure everything's on there nicely. You can kind of just gently kind of tap it in place. Um, now, canvases are generally very a nice kind of smooth item. So if my surface is smooth and doesn't have a lot of texture, I like to use plastic wrap or plastic sheets for this. These are deli bakery sheets. And I get them on Amazon, and they are in my Amazon storefront. Man, I love them. So I usually kind of start in the middle, and then just kind of work my way to the outside edges. You're going to get a very beautiful, smooth release smooth pretty much the smoothest you can get i think with this method you're always you may still have a, a little bit of texture here and there but it's not going to be near as much texture as it would be if we were just like pouncing down the napkin with a, a chip brush okay all right i'm feeling pretty good about this i'm going to lift this one up now you're going to see that some of the mod podge comes up through the plastic wrap okay some of the Mod Podge comes back up through the plastic wrap. Now, this is a really good question. Thanks for asking this question, Betty. Yes, if I put this to the side and I let this dry, I can reuse this plastic sheet, okay? But it's got to be completely dry. You never want to put one down over a napkin if it still has the wet Mod Podge, because if you do, it's going to try to pull the napkin back up. All right, so we're just going to switch places here. And now we're going to do the same thing with the bunnies. Okay. I love the plastic sheets. They come out of a box just like Kleenex. They're basically, you know, what you see, you'll see a lot of times like maybe at the donut shop, you know, you'll see them, things like that. But I get them on Amazon and they are in my Amazon storefront. All right, so again, just want to be sure. I want it to be even, but I don't want it to be too thin. And we can kind of, it might be hard to see on camera, but looking at it in the light, you just want to make sure you haven't missed any areas. Okay, and again, I'm going to kind of drag this down in place. I want to make sure I capture as much as I can of all the pretty. The napkin is going to be a little bigger than the canvas. Here, that looks good. And again, just kind of tap, 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 tap. Don't be tempted to smooth with your hands because you, the napkin could possibly tear. I'm going to use my plastic sheet, plastic wrap. Now, you can also do this with Plastic wrap in your kitchen. It doesn't have to just be the de the um, deli sheets or bakery sheets. It could even be saran wrap. Okay. Looking good. All right. Carefully, I'm going to pull this back. And now we're going to dry this. Okay, we're going to go ahead and dry this. Now, I am going to sand the edges off because my beautiful lavender um, ribbon, the kind of wrinkle crinkle lavender silk ribbon, is going to cover the sides. the perfect width. So I'm really just drying these so that way when I do sand off the excess napkin tissue, 
it doesn't pull the rest of my napkin when your napkins are wet you guys when the napkins are wet they're at their most fragile and that, that's when they can possibly tear okay beautiful all right these are nice and dry I'm just going to use a little piece of sandpaper here. If you had a little, like a little sanding block or sanding file, you could use that. In fact, let me see if I have a. Let's walk over here. I'm trying to see if I have a, one of my little sanding blocks up here, but I don't see one. So I'll just use my sandpaper. My diggy. But it could be anything, whatever you generally use, um, you know, a sanding file, even like an emery board, because the napkin tissue is super thin. So it's not going to be hard to sand the edges off. Okay, there's that one. Let's do this one. Yes, this is a kit. This is the canvas set, our newest release canvas set. I'm calling it Bunnies and Blossoms. It's kind of the Easter spring canvas set. Um, that um, comes out with our welcome home seasonal display so if you just signed on um, I showed that in the very beginning I'll show it again once we get our um, canvases made here you're gonna like the steps for these it's actually quite easy I'm gonna show you just some really simple steps that are gonna just take your napkin art from looking great to looking like wow okay let me get rid of all my little mess here okay now that we've done this okay now that we've done this we need to protect our napkin art okay so to protect it this is really really simple all we're going to do is just to add a thin coat of Mod Podge um, right over the top I prefer matte Mod Podge matte rather than glossy um not crazy about the glossy so i like the it's the yellow label mod podge matte i love it for napkin art okay i like the matte finish i like that it had when it dries it has a nice satiny smooth clear finish um sometimes the glossy it just i don't know i never have good luck with it and it always feels sticky to me even well after it's had plenty of time to dry so I really um, enjoy for canvas, for working on canvases, I really enjoy using Mod Podge Matte. And that's available in our shop if you don't have any, but this is something you could easily find at any of your local craft stores. All right, it's gonna look a little milky, but it's gonna dry crystal clear. The other reason that we're, that we're, or the reasons we're sealing this is first off, we have to protect it. I mean, remember it's just a very thin tissue. So we want to protect it. We also want to seal the napkin because we're going to do some pin work. Um, we're going to add some fun pin work and things onto our napkin. And if we don't seal it, the napkin will try to absorb the ink. And then things get fuzzy. The ink kind of bleeds and gets fuzzy. So we're going to make sure that we seal this. The other thing, which doesn't really make a difference because we're using a white canvas today, but if we were putting this maybe on like a beautiful wood surface or something else, um, by putting this top coat on, it also helps your napkin art to be more transparent. And that um, can be really important to us with certain surfaces. All right, so now we've done that step. And I'm just going to speed along the drying. You do not have to use a 
um, a heat tool. I'm just doing this to, to save time, right? I want to be a good steward of your time. <laughs> um, Nancy, I'll have to post a link to that. Um, if one of my other other peeps is out there, if y'all can grab the link to my Amazon storefront and post it, I would be greatly appreciative. Since my hands are busy. And if, if um, you can't find it, I'll post it after the live. I'll post it. Okay. So we did release um, this set yesterday and started taking orders. Um, a lot of you jumped on it <laughs> and ordered. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your orders. We appreciate that. Yes, and we're going to get ahead of uh, spring. We're going to make sure that we get some of our, our crafting done, especially for early spring Easter. Easter is earlier this year. It's the end of March. So it'll be nice to have these done. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to work with the lavender ribbon that's in, we're going to call it the egg bag. Okay, this is the egg bag. This is the bows bag. If you see this lace, that's the bows bag. Just, we're going to start with the egg bag. And I want you to, we're going to take out this beautiful, beautiful lavender ribbon. You're going to love this ribbon. It's so pretty. There are two yards of this ribbon um, in your bundle. Everybody's getting two yards of it. And that's um, not including um what's going to be in with your bow okay so this this ribbon is really sheer right it's kind of sheer it's kind of delicate it's beautiful it's got kind of a wrinkly um look to it it's just so so pretty and so what we're going to do to put this on is first off we are not going to use hot glue we're not going to use hot glue anything like that we're going to do the same thing to both canvases and this is how I'm going to put it on. It may seem a little, a little different to you, but I'm going to go down at the bottom of the canvas here. So I'm going to stand my canvas on its head. Okay. And we're going to put some Mod Podge here on the bottom of this canvas. And we are going to lay our beautiful ribbon right down into that Mod Podge. Okay, just kind of right down the center. It's like a little roadway. You'll see a little bit of white on each side and you can start smoothing it. Now you're going to notice that as you're doing this, you're going to see you may have some little spots that look just look wet and they are wet and it is because of the Mod Podge. Okay. But don't worry, don't worry. You're gonna, it's gonna be just fine as it dries, okay? Um, also, because it's so sheer, it can kind of wanna kind of wrinkle even more. Um, but I'll show you kind of, we just go back in and go in and smooth it. But this is the best way, y'all, um, to put this ribbon down because it is so pretty and so delicate. And we don't want glue showing through it, right? Like we don't want a big blob of hot glue or something showing through it. Um, and I, you know, I know that you can use double-sided tape for certain things, but it's so delicate. I don't even want to see the edges of the tape. So this is, this truly is the best option. Just we're going to use um, our Mod Podge. And... We're just going to smooth it down around as we go. Now I'm going to show you. You're going to see something's going to happen. And I'm going to show this to you because I don't want you to panic when it happens to you. Because it will. Different fibers react differently when they get wet. It's just how it is. And so I'm going to show you what this does when it gets wet. All right. And we... That's my last side here. Now I am going to cut this just a little, maybe just a, I don't know, what is that? Maybe a quarter inch, just a tiny bit. Have a little tiny edge going here. 
right there. Okay, I'm going to go back to where we started, and I want you to see what's happening. You see that? Can you see the little wrinkles? Look over here. See the little wrinkles? Okay, when certain fibers get wet, they just want to kind of, they want to kind of pucker. They just react differently. So what I usually do is just let it sit for a minute. Like we, this has been plenty enough time because this is the first side we started with. And I'm just going to take uh, my finger back across it. And we're just going to smooth that down. I personally kind of like the texture, <laughs> but you guys know me. I love texture. But if you're not crazy about that, that kind of rippled texture, this is all you have to do is just literally the friction from your finger is just going to help to smooth that um, as it's drying. OK. And that's it. I mean, it's really that easy. Now we're going to have this little bitty piece right here kind of coming up over the over the edge on this corner. This is the one place um, that I will put just a tiny little dot of glue. I'm not even going to do it right now. I'm going to let this dry. So can you see that? See how I kind of just a tiny little bit that's going to kind of wrap around that corner. Doesn't have to be much at all. All right. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to our other canvas. It doesn't matter which, which one you start with. We're just going to start on the bottom. All right. Fabri-Tac is too thick. It's too thick. And again, this is so delicate. When you get the ribbon, you're going to understand um, what I, you know, what I mean. But Fabri-Tac is just going to be too thick for this ribbon. You would have to really thin the Fabri-Tac down. So I just like using Mod Podge. The Mod Podge works great. And all of the, the color stuff, that just, that'll change as it dries. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. All right. All right. Just smooth it in place. Just don't be shocked when you go back to it and you see some little ripples. It's just normal. We'll just smooth them right back out. I don't put Mod Podge on top of this. No, no, no. It's only on the bottom. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you for posting that. Oh, you want to know about my, my little bracelet? Okay. Let me get this, this part done and I'll show you. <laughs> I have a granddaughter named Mackenzie that made me this bracelet. And I told her I would be wearing it today on my live. She's at school today, so she doesn't always get to see these live, but she likes to go back and watch and just, she doesn't watch the whole thing, but she just likes to go back and watch. And I'm going to tell her to watch today because I'm going to give her a shout out. She's quite the little creative as well. I think she takes after her lolly. I'm um, my husband and I are, are lolly and pop to our grandkids. <laughs> so I am lolly. Okay, I'm going back now. Right, I left that little little tiny extra extra there. So now I'm just going back, smoothing some of these little wrinkles, crinkles, whatever you want to call them. I don't really want to smooth them, but I am because I feel like you guys need to see me smoothing them, and then you can decide if you want to smooth yours or not. Right. Okay. So yes, her name is Mackenzie, and um, she made this for me a while back. But um, let's see if I can get it up here. It says Lolly. So she's very big right now into making bracelets and all kinds of things. <laughs> so she's making me bracelets for every season, and I was like, oh, well, this one feels like spring, so I'm I'm wearing it today. So thank you, Mackenzie for my beautiful spring inspired bracelet that has my name on it. So nobody can, can take it from me. <laughs> so yeah, she makes me little bracelets and things, different colors for different seasons, all the things. She's so sweet. All right. Okay. We got that part done. I'm going to set these, I'm going to let these just kind of dry for a bit. I 
think I got a little let me clean that up. So we're gonna let these dry for just a bit. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and, and work a little bit on the top of the canvas. Okay. I know she's so sweet. And she did a really good job on this. It's so cute. Okay, so now we're ready to do some pen work. You guys, how many of you love pen work? Let's bring this in a little closer now. And uh, I'm going to start some pen work on this one. And then I'm going to bring in the one that I've already done some pen work on. So pen work doesn't have to be on everything. All right. And I love the features on these bunnies so much that I'm not doing pen work on the actual bunnies themselves. What I am going to do some pen work on is going to be on the flowers. Okay, that's where I'm going to be doing um, some pen work. So I like to use pit pens for this. They're my favorite mixed media pen. Um, they're made with India ink, which is made kind of to lay on top of things. And they are made for mixed media. So that means they play nicely. All that means, y'all, I know some people are kind of scared of that, scared of the words mixed media. But all that means is that these items play nicely with other mediums. That just means I can I can draw and journal and doodle over paint or watercolor or Mod Podge or gelatos or whatever it is. OK, so we need to make sure the napkin is sealed, which we did. And so I'm going to come in. I think I'm going to use the small. Yeah, I'm going to use the small on this. And I'm going to do a little bit of pen work right here. So if you look at this flower now. And I'm very loose with my pen work. I'm kind of wiggly with it. I don't try to keep everything right on the lines. Sometimes I'm over the line. Sometimes I'm inside the line. And um, we're just going to kind of add some fun pin work in here. Now, there's some graduated kind of color going on in this pretty flower. So I'm going to take my pen and kind of do some doodly do action here. And I think you can tell immediately how much that shows up, right? It really, really shows up. So let's do a little bit on... Um, some of these leaves. And again, you don't necessarily have to do this on everything. Um, I just really enjoy doing pen work on napkin art. For one thing, to me, it kind of adds the handmade quality back into it. Um, I love that it helps pop the images, just gives them that little bit of extra... Um, A little bit of extra really where you can really see the features even better okay so we'll kind of look at that area let's go over here we'll do this and again I don't want you to feel like you have to do this on everything um, but you know as you start doing it just just kind of look you can pick and choose where you want to put it some of you may not want to add it at all but I just can't help myself. I have to, I have to add it <laughs> on certain things. To me, certain things are just like calling for it. And I just think it's so pretty. And I don't get too hung up on trying to make everything look perfect. I try to do it actually kind of fast because I think the faster you do it, the more, the less you're thinking about it. I need to clean up my hands. Okay. All right. We froze for a minute. Sorry. I don't know why. Come on. There we go. I don't know why we froze, but I think I just want you to see this kind of up close. So you can go in and add some pin work into some of these flowers and things. That's going to be so pretty. And as I mentioned, I didn't do any pin work on the bunnies. I thought they were pretty just like they are. So let me show you what this looks like after pin work. Okay. So here, um, I just want you to see, look at the pin work, right? 
So there's pin work all in here. We have some close up pictures um, on the website of this so that you can see. So all of my pin work really is just kind of geared towards the flowers and the leaves. And then notice one more thing. Does anybody see some sparkle happening? <laughs> I sparkled here. We'll put them right next to each other so you can kind of see the difference. Um, I added stickles to every single flower. Every flower has stickles. Okay. Every single flower has some stickles on it. And um, I just thought that was, was just really a, a nice kind of pretty ad. Okay. All right. So apart from that, I'm going to kind of look and see how our ribbon, our ribbon is drying nicely. Okay. Everything's looking really good on our ribbon. So let's go back to this little part right here. We're going to go ahead and put on our hanger. Okay. We're going to put on our hanger. I'm going to use my hot glue. This is the only place I'm going to use hot glue. And I'm going to use a tiny, teeny, tiny, tiny bit right there over. Just overlap that. Remember, it's going to be on the bottom corner. Do just a tiny bit more. And there we go. Okay. And that way it's going to be nice and secure. Do you see how it just kind of blends in? It's just going to blend in really well. Okay. All right. Let's do the same thing over here. Teeny, 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 teeny bit. And we're just going to press that down. Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to turn these canvases over. And before I do that, um, I'm going to clean up my table. <laughs> I'm going to clean my table up here a little bit and my fingers. Got Mod Podge all over them. I know, they're so pretty. They're, um, you know, one thing, don't, okay, I think I'm, I'm, I need to, I need to rewind just a bit. Let me rewind just a bit right quick. I talked about the pin work, the black pin work, and then the stickles. Don't put the stickles on just yet because you may want to come in and add some um, other pin work with the glaze pens. So stickles are really the end of the end of the end at the very, very end so that you don't have to touch them again. They can just sit on your table overnight or however long, let them um, completely dry. So let me just kind of make sure I don't have any gluey stuff. I have some dried paint on this, but just want to make sure that that's good and clean. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this over. Let's do our hangers and then we'll come back to um, talking more about pin work and glaze pins. All right. Remember, this is the last bit of ribbon that you have. Let me back this back out. This is the last of the ribbon from the, um, oh, there's another little lot of glue. I'm not sure that's all cleaned up. So I like cutting this. This is going to be the hanger for your canvas. I like cutting these exactly 11 inches. 11 inches is just, it's, it's just the size. It just works great. It's just perfect for hanging on the um, hardware, the beautiful knob and door plate right that's on your um, house so i'm going to cut this 11 inches and you're going to need two of them one for each canvas i have a little scrap page, scrap part there okay so we have we're going to have one for each canvas 11 inches And this is going to be really super easy to do. Make sure <laughs> that your hanger is at the top. <laughs> <coughs> uh, 
not speaking from personal experience there. We're going to make sure here's the top, right? So we're going to put our hanger right here. And I'm actually going to just do this with hot glue. This ribbon is going to be just fine. I'm going to kind of uh, make a circle of hot glue and I'm, I'm kind of uh, um, going around in it just to kind of spread it out. And this is going to go, you're going to go down about an inch. So I would say an inch right onto that hot glue. Just trying to make sure that I, there we go. And then an inch right here. This is on the back. It's going to secure it really, really well. So inch and inch, this is 11 inches. So it gives you basically from here around, it gives you about a nine inch hanger. Really, really super easy to do. Okay, super easy. Best to do that before we start putting on any other embellishments. Okay, here's the top. So I'm going to turn that over. The canvases are lightweight, so they hold up just fine. Sometimes, depending on the ribbon in the past, sometimes I'll pop a staple in there, but you're not going to need to do that with this ribbon. It's going to be just fine. Do this one. I'm just making sure that my ribbon doesn't get twisted. All right. So now our hangers are on. Okay, I want to play with this one. We're going to play with this one first. Okay, and again, we're going to come back and we're going to do a little bit of pin work. Now, this particular one um, where I did the majority of my pin work is going to be on the jars here and these uh, these white flowers. So again, you can use whatever um, the the pins that we carry have four uh, different nibs. They have like a, um, a medium, a small, an extra small, and a brush tip. So it's, it's a great set for um, those of you that are um, embracing napkin art. And for those of you that have not thought about joining the napkin club, I would love to invite you to do that. Um, right now we're currently operating off of a wait list, but if you get this kit and you realize, hmm, I want to learn more about creating with napkins and you want to get a variety, a beautiful variety bundle of napkins every single month, then the Napkin Club may be the, the place for you. So we're currently um, filling spots off the wait list. So as long as you get on the wait list, that is how you get into the club right now. We'd love to have you join us. Okay, so most of my pen work has happened here, here, and here, right? Now I'm going to do a little bit more on the flowers. I'm going to bring the, my, the ones that have the pin work over here for you. Um, especially like I love this, pretty much this one and this one. Really didn't do a lot of pin work on this one because I just didn't feel like it needed it. Okay. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do this kind of fast. These are, I really want these flowers to kind of get, have that, I don't know, a little bit more organic feel. They look very watercolory. They're so pretty. And I'm not, I'm I'm wiggly and all the things. So those of you that say, "Oh, I can't do pen work because my hands shake." Well, your hands shaking may actually help your pen work. <laughs> so don't give up on it. Try it out. All right, and I'm going to do a little bit um, here on the tulips. Okay, I think you can see how fast that was. So you see this tulip, you see this tulip. And if you want it to be more delicate, you just use a smaller nib on your uh, of a pen, right? I'm using the small right now. 
If it was something much more delicate, I could come in and use maybe the extra small. Oh, I love these tulips. So pretty. Pin work is really relaxing to me. I, I just enjoy it. And we're just kind of adding our own little um, doodly do. We're just kind of following along with the, the artwork itself. And then you can always go in and kind of add some of your own flair here and there. Like I'm going to do that on the, these little, whatever, what do they call those, stamen or whatever, on the inside of the tulip. Okay, so that is my pen work for this one. Now we're going to talk about glaze pens. Glaze pens. Glaze pens are so much fun to work with. Um, I'm going to show you what these are. So glaze pens, I think I used mainly the bright set on um, these canvases. There's a brights, and then we have another set that kind of feels a little bit more like fall type colors. So um, they're just, they're so, so pretty. Um, and the thing about the glaze pens, all right, the thing I like about them is they stay glossy looking. They stay kind of shiny. They stay glossy looking. Um, let me grab a little piece of paper here. So I'm going to. It's almost kind of like a like a gel pen. I'm just going to do a little petal kind of of this here, so hopefully you can kind of see it. It's it they stay glossy, they stay looking kind of wet, and that's just another kind of a neat unique layer that we can add in. There's that color of green. Let's see what this color is. This one I think yeah, this one looks more kind of like mossy green. Here's another pin. This one looks a little bit more teal. Do you see? So they all, it's kind of good to, you always want to get them started off of your project and um, they're very free flowing. Okay. They're very, very free flowing. So I'm just going to use the one that's in my hand right now. So if I want to come in here, I can actually do this. I decided to do my glaze pens over my leaves. And they look so pretty. So let me do a couple, and then I'm going to hold it up so you can, can really see. And like I said, it's very, very free-flowing. And it's going to stay looking wet. It does take a little bit longer to dry. So be careful not to put your hand in it um, too soon. Oh, there you go. You can kind of see how it looks wet. Sorry, it's a little bit blurry. See how it looks wet like that? It's going to keep that kind of shine, and uh, it's going to be gorgeous. Let's come up here on this lighter leaf. So I just thought it was kind of fun to come in and add maybe – um, another layer. This just kind of adds in another layer. It also is a little bit dimensional. So this leaf right up here. Be careful not to touch it. When you think it's dry, wait a little longer. <laughs> okay. When you think it's dry, wait a little longer. All right, so you could come in and do whatever you want to with these. I'm going to come back in with the yellow now and just show you. See the centers of these flowers right here? So I can come in and add this little bit of yellow kind of into those centers, and it's pretty. It brightens them up. Um, again, it's going to stay shiny. And it's going to be more dimensional. Oh, it's so pretty. It 
may be hard to capture on camera, but it is so, so pretty. Now let's go over here to this one. And by the way, let's go to our finished one. The only place I put stickles on these was just on the glass, just on the glass jars and not the flowers. And I think it just kind of, kind of added a unique look to the glass jars. Okay. We do sell the glaze pens, Jackie. We sure do. We sell both sets um, in the shop. And you can get to the shop by going to MissTracyCreates.com. And there's a little shop um, button that you can click on. And then if you want to, you can go in and just search with the word glaze. G-L-A-Z-E. Look at this color. Ooh, I love this color. So this is the color I decided to use on these. Okay these right here all right here we go so this is kind of interesting because all i did on this one is i just kind of created little puddles so almost like adding little circles just little circles that aren't really circles that's why i'm calling them puddles <laughs> can you see them right there so they're just um it's not really like a polka dot i'm just coming in and kind of giving these, I'm going to, I'm going to call them lavender stalks. I don't really know what they are or hyacinth. Maybe that's what they are. Um, but just putting in um, these little kind of like, kind of like circular, circular ish puddles. Remember it's very free flowing. So don't stay in one spot for too long or you, or you really will get a true puddle. I'll just do kind of half and half on here, but look how that adds. Oh, it just adds a whole nother, you know, dimension, really a whole nother dimension. It's just gorgeous. And so that is what I did on this particular one right here. Okay. Now let's go back to the egg basket or not egg basket, the egg bag. <laughs> All right, and this time we're gonna pull out the jute and we're gonna pull out the purple button. There is a purple button, purple wood button and the jute. Because um, again, I'm kind of just showing you these different techniques. I would just finish these off. And of course, when they're finished off, um, you'll see what they look like over here on the finished um, canvas so pretty so do you see this little jute bow i decided i wanted that to look like a real jute right oh that's what was wrong okay sorry i had a little filter thing on there so it wasn't being quite as bright okay so i think you can kind of see just have to kind of move it in the light but this right here i decided i wanted that to be actually you know an actual bow so that is what this jute is for. So I didn't try to go around the jar. I just am going to make a bow. Just a, just a normal bow. Nothing fancy about this bow. Like you tie your shoes. And just pull it down. We don't want it to be too, too big. So I'm going to pull it down a little bit. Okay. Making a bow. And then... I'm going to use my hot glue here right in the center, but I'm also going to use a little hot glue around where these loops go to start. And I'm going to make my bow loops go on top of the napkin bow loops. Okay, now we're going to see that we have one strand kind of coming right down here. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot in this one, and let's do a knot in this one. We're going to have two strands going down instead of one on ours. That's the only thing really different than the napkin. So I'm going to glue this one down first. And again, I'm just following the napkin with my hot glue. Okay, following the napkin with my hot glue. I'm just, and then I'm gonna make my piece go right on top. 
It doesn't have to be exact. And then over here, I'm just going to kind of, we'll just have it just kind of overlap that little flower right there. So cute. And then I'm going to top it off with my cute little purple button right in the center, just a little hot glue right in the center, and add my button. All right. Very easy to do and so cute. So now it's dimensional. We have something kind of dimensional on there. And that's what all these little touches we're doing is just adding another layer, adding another layer, right? Just really, really cute. Okay, I'm going to put take this one back out of the way. Let's go ahead and look at it over here again when it's all finished. Um, again, love adding the sparkle on um, the jars. Okay, and that's simply just using stickles for that. All right, we're going to switch places and go to our bunny. I'm go back to the bunny bunny's canvas. <laughs> and we're going to take everything else out. The bunnies get the eggs. The bunnies get the eggs. The bunnies get this light pink bow and a green button. A screen wood button. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to go back to our pretty glazed pens. Um, I did some, obviously, I did the black pen work on um, the flowers. But then I came back in and I added in some glaze pen work. If you want to add it in in the centers of flowers, you can. You can add them really wherever you want. So I did do that, made sure that was dry before I did any of the stickles. And also I want to show you this, to look at the bunny's noses, okay? Look at the bunny's noses. You see their noses? <laughs> the eggs are foam. They're like styrofoam, because we're gonna cut them. We're gonna cut them here in just a minute, Kimberly. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna use my pink glaze pen. This is a really hot pink glaze pen, but watch what I'm going to do. Um, in fact, let's get it started first. Again, always good to get it started. Look, that looks really pretty neon pink, doesn't it? I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to do some little just dots, dot, dot, dots over both of their noses. Dot, 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 dot. And then I'm not going to give it a chance to dry because then I'm going to come in and take my finger over it and just pounce it. And it's going to give them a pink look to their noses. <laughs> Can you see it? And if you want it to be even pinker, then you just add in some more. Okay, you can add in some more. I did this just with my finger because I don't want it to look polka dotted. I just want to give it kind of the... Um, almost like a watery, colory look of pink noses. Okay? I like pink noses on bunnies. <laughs> right? Um, so that's something fun that you can do with your glaze pens, too, is by using paint brushes with them or Q-tips with them or even your fingertips with them. You get a completely different look. You can really do some fun techniques with that. All right, next thing we're going to do is take this very, very light pink, um, again, this, this kind of wrinkled um, silk, and we're going to tie another bow. This is going to be the bow that's going to go on the bunny's neck. Sorry, I've got sticky. I need to clean my hands again. I didn't get all the Mod Podge off. It keeps trying to pull. All right, just a bow. Just a, a, again, a normal bow. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy. And we don't want it to be too, too big. We don't want it to over overpower our bunny. 
and I'm gonna just give it a little scissor tail cut. You can cut the cut the bow any way that you would like. I'm gonna come in and just add a little bit of hot glue, just kind of spread it a little here. And then I'm gonna pull my my loops down. See what I just did? See how I have them pulled down? I'm gonna pull them down because I want the loops kind of going downward. They're gonna just grab into the glue and that way I'm the, you are the boss of your bow. I say that a lot on here. You're the boss of your bow and we're gonna just make those loops kind of go downward in the way that we want them to be. We're gonna go in and add the green button I know, right? You guys love it. It's so cute. I love, I love actually adding the little embellishments and things and I don't want to add too much. Uh, I don't want to take away from the napkin art. I just want to add to it, right? I just want to add to it. So we're going to add the cute little green button in the center. So basically what happens is our blossoms, right? Our blossoms get the jute bow and the purple button. And our brown bunny is going to get the pink, the soft pink bow and the green button. Yeah, I know. So cute. Okay, now eggs. Let's talk about eggs. The eggs are already sparkly, which is fabulous, but they're a little bit too dimensional, right? They're they're a little too, too fat. We want to actually give them um, a flat back. Okay, now these are just styrofoam on the inside. So I'm going to take my little crafty scissors here and I'm literally just going to cut off the back. Not half, it doesn't even have to be halfway off the back. We just need part of the back off so that we have a, a piece that is flat. Okay, we, we don't want these to be quite this dimensional and very, very easy to cut just styrofoam so just cut them and then they'll have a black a flat back and that's going to make it so much easier to glue them in place And now we're just gonna uh, we're gonna hide our eggs. Well, we're not really hiding our eggs, but we're gonna have our eggs kind of down wherever we want them to be down here, kind of in the bottom of the canvas. I just kind of give them a push to help them kind of flatten just a bit. And um, like I said, it's really kind of up to you wherever you want to put them. Maybe this one down here at this bunny's feet. So they're just kind of around. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to, I mean, you can see I didn't, I mean, it's not a whole lot that I took off, but yeah, you could probably shape these into a smaller little egg and use them. <laughs> so hang on to your little scraps if you want to. Um, so we've done our embellishment on this. We've done our embellishment on this one. The only thing I didn't finish out with you was all of the pin work. I think I gave you enough of a demonstration of what you can do to go in and add your black pin work first, okay? Then anything you wanna add with glaze pens, if you choose to. We're not gonna add any stickles until the end, the end, the end. So now it's time for us to make some bows. You guys ready? We finally get to venture into the bows bag. <laughs> All right, let's pull all this out. And let me kind of clear my space here a little bit. 
I'm going to grab a clothespin. And we're going to make our bows. Okay, so you're going to have quite the, quite the little bundle here um, of ribbons. Go ahead and just um, untie the jute. And we're going to separate these ribbons. You're going to need um, the jute separated. We're going to separate it into two piles, essentially. Okay, so we have a pile here. We have a pile here. There's going to be some white lace. You're going to need one for one pile. One for the other pile. You're going to have some purple silk or lavender silk, actually, lavender. One for each pile. You're going to have this pretty kind of robin's egg color for one. You're going to have this pretty light, kind of blush light pink for the other. Okay, so that's how you're going to divvy out the contents of your bag. All right. Yes. Okay. Are we doing good? Okay. Let's do this one first. Let's make this one first. They're both made the exact same way. You're going to take your jute out of this little bundle here. And now we're going to layer these together. So let's layer down the white floral. Let me fix that. There we go. That's a little better. And then you can put down your purple, and then you can put down your pink. Okay, I'm going to try to do this just the best best way that I know how to, to show you how to make a really easy bow. We've done these before, but not with this many pieces of ribbon. So I have the three in a pile here, okay? And now I'm going to bring this side down and this side down. So you can see I kind of have created this tribute style ribbon, but with multiple layers of ribbon. Okay, multiple layers of ribbon. It's okay if they kind of fall off, you know, off their little uh, pile or whatever. It's going to be fine. Your um, tails are going to be about this long. I don't know. It's really up to you. This part will become the loops. So let me show you what's going to happen. We have made our tribute ribbon here. Okay. We're going to go up to the top. All right. Up to the top. And I'm going to pick up where this intersects. And I'm going to take the stuff at the top. And I'm going to put it behind where everything intersects. And then you guys are all going to learn, do my little trick here with a clothespin. We're going to use a clothespin to kind of hold everything together. Okay, that's what it's going to look like. <laughs> All right, that's what it's going to look like. The clothespin is so handy. If you have a clothespin, grab that. Now I'm going to pick this up. We're going to use the jute to tie this off. So we're going to put our jute underneath. And before I tie it like super tight, I'm going to take away the clothespin and make sure that I'm in the middle. And we're going to tie it in a knot. No bow with this, just a knot. And then I'm going to tie a knot in each tail. Just the jute, a knot in the tail of the jute. Yeah, that clothespin is a great third hand. Okay, so essentially this is kind of what it's going to look like. And it's okay if the tails don't all, um, you know, exactly meet all of those things. Now I'm going to be the boss of my bow, all right? Don't be afraid. We're going to grab it. We're going to grab it right in the center. And we're going to pull these loops upward. And we're going to pull these loops so we're basically kind of pulling the tails and the loops apart. And I want you to just let the bow just kind of spread out like it, just however it does. Don't try to, you know, you don't have to try to make everything be um, exactly 
um, the same on both sides. I kind of, I kind of like it when it's just kind of just organic. We're just going to let it kind of fall the way that it falls open. It's going to be really pretty. And we're going to add this to the bottom of the bunny canvas. Okay. Now see right here, there's a little bit of a line here. We're not going to really put this on the, the actual bottom, like the edge of the canvas. We're going to actually put it right up here. Okay, so I'm going to draw, just kind of um, squeeze out just a nice kind of a line of glue, not just a dot of glue, a line of glue. And I'm going to push my bow down into it. And just kind of play with it. So pretty. And I feel like I need a little bit more glue right here. Again, this is going to help my loops to kind of stay where I want them to stay. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Isn't that pretty? And then, of course, you can come in and, you know, um, give it a haircut, whatever it needs. Add your stickles wherever your stickles are going to be. I'll just show you how I do that really quick. I just literally just take it straight from the bottle. There's like a little precision tip here. And just kind of use that tip to kind of squeeze a little out and kind of paint it around. So you could do it on this part of the flower and not the center of the flower if you want the center to stay that shiny glaze, right? So you can stickle whatever you want to stickle. And it's ready. This one's ready. Let's pull the other one over here that's got all the pin work and all the sparkle. I didn't put a, anything in the center of the bow. I just, I just didn't feel like it needed it. So I just left it. But you may decide you want to put something in there. Isn't it gorgeous? So fun. <laughs> Your hot glue does not seem to stick. Oh, that's unusual, Gail. What kind of hot glue is it? Is it like the, is it high temp or low temp? I'd be curious to know. Tell me in the comments. All right, we're going to make one more bow so you get to watch this happen again. Yes, sometimes the, the glitter will stick in the, in the tube here. And usually what I do is just put a straight pin um, down the tube to unclog it. Sometimes you get a little... A little uh, glitter goober in there. All right, let's do one more bow. Uh, gorilla glue sticks. I'm not familiar. I've never used gorilla glue sticks. That's interesting because I haven't really ever had any problem with my glue sticks, my gl hot glue sticking. So, all right, so we've layered up our three pieces here. And again, we're going to kind of create this tribute ribbon shape. So I'm going to bring this part down. And I'm going to bring this part down. This is so pretty to do these with multiple layers of ribbon. Really, really pretty and easy. It's not hard to do. Okay. Now we're going to pick it up. We have to pick it up. I'm going to pick it up right here where everything intersects. And then I'm going to pick it up right here at the top of this loop. And I'm going to take the top of the loop behind. I dropped a piece. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. Ribbon down. <laughs> I dropped a piece. I have to get all the pieces.
All right, hang on. We're gonna do it again. Let's do it again. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of hold it in the center. I'm gonna bring this side down. And then this side down. And again, we kind of have this tribute ribbon look going on. Okay, let's pick it up. I'm gonna pick up where everything is has intersected. There we go, now I got it all. Go to the top of the loop, and we're gonna bring that behind everything that intersected. Now you can do this multiple times because like right now I feel like my ribbon loops are not big enough. So I'm gonna do it again, and this time I'm gonna make the ribbon, the loop part of my, um, technique here, I'm going to make it bigger. So these are kind of your tails. These are your tails. Up here is what's going to become your loops. So if I want bigger loops, bow loops, I need a bigger initial loop up here. So we're going to take this, it's going to go behind the intersection. And this is where our good old clothespin comes into play. Okay. Same technique, exact same technique. I'm going to take the jute. We're going to tie it off. Before you tie it off tight, you're going to tie it off to where it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to take this off and then I'm going to kind of move my jute over into the center and tie it in a nice tight double knot. Okay, then I'm going to pull my loops up and my tails down, loops up, tails down. Again, going to tie a knot in the jute, the tail of the jute. That's so pretty. And then of course you can separate the loops out however you want. Let's see all those pretty colors coming through. It's gorgeous, right? So on this particular piece, again, I'm gonna do kind of a line of hot glue right across the bottom here underneath that um, middle jar you can kind of spread your ribbon loops out a little bit but i don't want them covering everything up i want them kind of going across and and down so let's get this part kind of in here and then we can start messing with our pretty loops and all the things and again coming back in oops I did a very terrible job on that one cutting cute little tails I'm just doing a little scissor slant on these This kind of ribbon, when you're using a ribbon that's this delicate with lace, it's better to be at the bottom because it's not, it doesn't hold, you know, it's, it's very delicate, right? It's, it doesn't have a lot of sturdiness to it. If we tried to put the bow at the top, everything would just fall down over our napkin art. So it's better when you're using laces and delicate ribbons to put your bows at the bottoms of things. And um, yeah, isn't it pretty? It's just so gorgeous. And then again, when I'm ready to add my stickles, and I'm going to add my stickles on just the glass. I'm literally just going to kind of come in. There's a couple places I'm, I, need, I still need to do pin work on this one, so I'm going to kind of avoid those places. 
and even over here just just work your way in and we want this glass to sparkle and then we just have to let the stickles dry and we're ready to put it out on display super fun and super easy <laughs> Any hints on sharpening scissors? Most fabric shops have a scissor guy that picks up that scissors once a week that will sharpen them for you. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it pretty? Okay, so there's that one. I still need, like I said, I still need to do some glaze work on that. So let's look at the finished one. Here's our finished one. And again, all those kind of little little dip dot puddles all in this um i don't know if it's lavender hyacinth whatever you want to call it <laughs> it's so pretty um pinware glaze pens on the leaves some glaze in the centers and then stickles on the glass jars they're just gorgeous our bunny we added our cute little eggs. We have our bow. We have our pink noses. Any pen work, glaze pens that you want to add on leaves or centers of flowers, wherever you want to add that, and then wherever you want to sparkle. We'll just add in that little bit of sparkle. Okay. Aren't they great? Don't you see how these, it's, these techniques are not hard. They're, just, they're little simple techniques. But this is how you take your napkin art from looking great to just looking like, you know, just a work of art, right? Just like, wow, like, how did you do that? 